Think your phone is listening in on your conversations while it sits quietly in your pocket? That thought might just be true as a recent investigation from the Washington Post claims that the smartphones of 37 human rights activists and journalists were potentially hacked with wiretapping software. We'll take a look at this topic and address the ethics behind it as we sit down and sync up with Rocket IT's technology update for Thursday, July 22nd. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Swenson, your Technology Insider here at Rocket IT, and welcome to another episode of Sync Up, your new home for trending technology news. In today's segment, we're taking a look at the Pegasus software that's been used heavily by the remote surveillance company NSO Group. So to get an idea of how important this topic is in the technology world, let's first take a look at exactly what NSO Group is and the type of clients they work with. So when you think of a remote surveillance software company, what exactly do you think of? Well, you don't think of your average Joe being able to get a hold of software such as this. So instead, the type of clients that the NSO Group works with are actually entire government agencies for whole uh, countries. And while a lot of NSO Group's clients come to them looking to use their software for good, some unchecked clients can actually be using this for adverse reasons. Typically, many of NSO Group's clients come to them looking to use their software to track down cyber criminals or terroristic groups that might be threatening the safety of the public. So if the recent news of the hacks against journalists and activist phones did stem from the use of Pegasus software, it goes against the mission of the NSO group and the organization will have to investigate the client responsible for launching the attack. Because major software developers such as Google, Microsoft, and Apple have started using end-to-end -end encryption in a lot of their products, Tracking down the communication of a lot of these criminals has become rather difficult. In turn, the NSO group has found an alternative means of tracking criminal communication, albeit maybe not the most ethical way. Simply put, the NSO group has been responsible for developing the software known as Pegasus, which essentially secretly installs spyware onto mobile devices. In order to infect a device, Pegasus essentially sends the individual an SMS text message that you would typically receive from any of your close contacts. But inside of that SMS message is a phishing link. And when that phishing link is clicked, it secretly installs the software that I previously mentioned. Alternatively, in some of the newer campaigns that the NSO group has launched, this phishing step isn't even required. In fact, they're able to get on your phone without you accepting any type of prompt at all. Now let's say that you're infected by the spyware. What exactly happens next? Well, first and foremost, the Pegasus client sends all of the information from your device to the client that launched it. It then goes in and turns on the microphone and the camera of your device in order to eavesdrop on you in the future. Additionally, any type of information that's stored on the device in the future will also be sent back to the client as well to give them an understanding of how you're living out your lifestyle. So let's get back to the story at hand here. 37 different individuals ranging from those in nonprofit activist groups to journalistic organizations had their devices tampered with in some form. So this information was actually found online by two different sources. First, uh, it was discovered by the nonprofit group Hidden Stories and then also Amnesty International. While 37 notable individuals are suspected to have been hacked, more than 50,000 other individuals were on that list from countries known to be clients of the NSO group. And while the list doesn't exactly say how the information was collected, researchers from the Washington Post and other groups that they contacted strongly suggested that the NSO group's Pegasus software was the culprit of these attacks. A group known as the Pegasus Project actually took a look at the list that's available right now online, and they reached out to some of the victims that are on that list and got in contact with them and took a look at their phones to run some forensic tests. They then compared the notes they gathered from those tests to the information about the wiretapping process that NSO Group uses and found that there were some very close similarities between the process that infected those phones and the standard process that NSO Group uses. In a statement from NSO Group CEO Shalev Julio, he said, Every allegation about misuse of the system is concerning to me. It violates the trust that we give customers, and we are investigating every allegation. Whether or not the NSO Group will file a defamation lawsuit is still up in the air. That said, the NSO Group has made it very clear that they've revoked their services from clients that have misused them in the past, and they're willing to do the same thing today if it's found that those claims from the Washington Post are true. The NSO Group has gone on to confirm that it actually doesn't operate the spyware that many of its clients use, and they can't see the information that their clients are collecting 
And it's up to those clients to remain responsible with the NSO Group's services. So while collecting data online can be beneficial and can help researchers analyze trends or even stop online threats, there's clearly a right and wrong way to go about doing it. When abused, using phishing techniques to bait people into downloading spyware not only infringes on their personal privacy, but it can also threaten the free flow of information from journalists, the positive impact of nonprofits, and even the campaigns of local officials. This begs the question, does there need to be a new system of checks and balances to ensure ethical wiretapping isn't used for political or personal gain? Leave a comment to let us know your thoughts. And in the meantime, stay tuned for the next episode of Sync Up with Rocket IT.